Yes, yeah, so my name's Marianne Chapman and I'm a senior clinician in the intensive care unit at the Royal Adelaide Hospital and I'm also a professor in the School of Medicine in the University of Adelaide. In the intensive care unit we, um, we support very sick patients, so the most common diagnostic groups are patients after severe trauma like uh, car accidents, um, patients with severe infections, uh, COVID's a good example of that, and also patients after complex surgery. So we're doing nutrition research in critically ill patients in the ICU at the Royal Adelaide to try and improve uh, patients' survival and functional outcomes. From our research previously, we know that, uh, for example, patients who are working prior to coming into the ICU, only about 50% of them are back at work by six months. So that's a sort of gauge of how um, how delayed and uh, limited their recovery can be. So what we're trying to look at there is uh, to improve that by improving their nutrition, um, by the types of food and how we give food in the intensive care unit, and also to some extent by looking at their mobility, so their activity, which is with the physiotherapists. So we've been doing this uh, nutrition-related work for many years. Um, so we started by quantifying or looking at the abnormalities in gut function that patients have when they're very sick. Um, so we found that their stomach uh, empties very slowly, it uh, becomes very immobile, and, uh, and also that the absorption of nutrition from the small intestine is impaired. And um, so we've looked at drugs to try and make the stomach work a bit better and also improve absorption of nutrition. And, uh, and then we had this idea that maybe we could improve the recovery of these patients by just feeding them more. So we did a very large study where we in enrolled patients from multiple sites all around Australia and New Zealand and uh, looking at whether increasing calorie delivery actually improved um, survival and recovery. And we found um, that it didn't actually make any difference. And, uh, and that's a good thing to find out because it's actually quite difficult to feed these people. We normally feed them with a tube, which is going through their nose and into their stomach. But as I said, the stomach function is often not particularly good when they're very sick. And so it's a struggle sometimes to feed them. So the fact that it doesn't really make a difference whether we give uh, a full amount of calories um, was a helpful thing because it meant that we could relax on that. And we've now um, diverted our attention to um, looking to see whether increasing protein delivery or a high protein diet will improve recovery. At the moment, we're concentrating on protein. Uh, so we are looking at whether a high protein diet will improve recovery. Um, we are looking at, firstly at how protein is handled and metabolised in patients who are really sick. But we're also planning to set up a, a big study like we did with the calories. So in involving um, centres across Australia and New Zealand to look at whether a high protein diet will actually improve survival and functional outcome. So we hope that it's going to, um, well, possibly improve survival, but particularly we think it's more likely to improve recovery. So recovery times, so getting people up and walking again. So uh, I think people will have seen um, patients who've, been, who've spent a long time in the ICU with COVID. And, uh, and so we had several of those in Adelaide. I think our patients are always benefiting from the research that has been done previously. And that's actually something I often tell our families when we are talking to them about getting consent for their family member to be included in one of these studies is that medicine is progressing all the time. And, uh, and yes, so we have got now better survival from ICU compared to years ago. And that's because of the research that's been done in the past. And that includes nutrition research. What we do know is that patients' muscle mass uh, reduces significantly even during a very short stay in the ICU. Um, so even seven days or 10 days in the ICU, patients will leave with a markedly reduced muscle mass and that obviously affects their, um, their 
mobility and their, their time of recovery. So having shown that um, the amount of calories that we give patients in the ICU doesn't make any difference on their recovery, we've changed our focus to looking at protein. And uh, so we're looking at protein in lots of different ways. And so one aspect of it is to look and see how uh, protein is handled by the, the uh, critically ill body, the very sick body. So we're looking at protein um, absorption and uptake into muscle. Um, and we're particularly interested in how much protein the patient's getting, but also the types of protein that the patient's getting. So we know from research that's done in exercise physiology that certain types of amino acids um, stimulate muscle um, growth and um, stop muscle breakdown. So we're interested in looking at that aspect. We're also looking at how people deliver protein to sick patients around the world. And, um, and we're also, um, we, we've done a, a small study looking to see whether we can actually safely deliver more protein to our patients in preparation for doing a very large study uh, looking at the effect of a high protein diet on functional recovery. The feeds that we give our patients, so we get a liquid feed, um, which is delivered through that tube, which goes through the nose and into the stomach. And that feed contains a full diet. So it's got carbohydrate, protein, fat, vitamins, and trace elements in it. And um, so the types of protein at the moment are fairly standard, but we're very interested at looking at the different types of proteins that are available. We are leading um, a lot of this research here in the Royal Adelaide, here in Adelaide. Um, and, but we're also collaborating actively with um, people around the city, people around the country. So there is a uh, very active and successful uh, clinical trials group in intensive care around Australia and New Zealand. And uh, so we, and we are an active part of that group. Um, so, so there's a lot of intensive care research going on, which is all about improving outcomes. So that's not only in nutrition, but in other areas as well. So we are an active part of that, as well as leading the nutrition side of it.